G'day everyone. In this tutorial, I'm just going to be showing you how to how to lay out a um, to do a PCB layout in DipTrace from a schematic. We're going to be doing a um, op amp buffer, a very simple circuit, the the, the most basic circuit I can think of um, for a guitar pedal. Just to, just as an introductory thing, and by the end of it, you should have a layout that you can print and etch yourself, so you can make your own buffer. Um, this is going to be the single sided version. I'm going to do it again. For double-sided version and I'm gonna go uh, might be a separate video but I'll also do a, a video on how to upload your um, how to upload your uh, layouts to OSH Park to get them fabricated um, and then you can share them from there you can you can you can actually you can actually make it a public um, layout and people can have their own boards fabricated um, you can yeah the, the, the sky's the limit um, once you learn this stuff um, and this is gonna be I'm not a professional um, PCB designer. There's a lot. There's actually um, there, there are some professional PCB designers on the forums. I'm just a hack at this stuff, um, which I don't think is actually a bad thing because if you're a novice, uh, I've probably got a pretty good way of being able to explain this stuff to you because I'm not going to go into like uh, in depth ways of setting up these boards. It's just going to be the the simplest way that I know on on making a um, PCB layout. Um, so the first part of this video is going to be um, the setup, just putting the placing the finding the components, then putting them, um, placing them down, and um, um, and uh, just setting up the setting up the components, and then the next one will be uh, routing out the um, the circuit, and then the last one will be finalizing it all, um, panelizing it, and printing it off. Um, so it should be it should be if you not if you've wanted to learn how to do PCB layout. Um, I'd encourage you to watch these videos because I'd be surprised by the end of the video if you couldn't um, do a basic circuit, uh, a basic layout, and um, and print them off yourself. So um, to start off with, um, we need a schematic. So the schematic that I'm following is is the most simplest circuit that I know, which is the Beavis Audio um, op amp buffer. There's only there's only five components, so it's quite small, which is good for a good for a beginner um, tutorial. Um, so we're going to need some components for that, um, and the first um, the first component that we'll get is actually going to be the IC. Um, so go to the go to Google and type in Beavis Audio Buffer, and and scroll and click on the first link that comes up and scroll down to op amp buffers, and you'll you'll see the one that I'm talking about. It's the one with the TL071 um, uh, 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 chip, um, and that chip is a DIP8. Um, if you're not sure. Um, what package it is. Um, you can look up the data sheet and it will say package and then it will say what it is. Um, I know what this one is, it's a DIP8. Um, in fact, any component that you're not sure what it is, you can look up um, You can look up the, the data sheet for it and it will tell you, like a diode might say DO35. Um, uh, but with the passives it won't quite work that way, but we'll get to that in a moment. So the first thing we need is, a, is an IC and it's a DIP8. So along the top here is the component libraries. Um, so just scroll along until you find dip. There it is there, dip, not dip underscore p or dip smd, just dip on its own. And then scroll down until you find a component called dip hyphen eight, which is, it's actually towards the bottom. My, um, my, my, my list was actually already at the bottom, but um, yeah, if you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see um, one called dip eight, dip dip hyphen eight and it looks like that. Um, so that's your dip, that's that's the TL071. Um, and now you're gonna need um, two resistors as you can see on the schematic. So go uh, scroll along until you find the um, the library called resistor. <clears throat> and this this library is broken up into a few different um, uh, a few different types of resistors. You've got SMD down the bottom here. You can see that they're just two square pads. That's a that's an SMD resistor. Um, the through-hole ones are the ones with two two pads and a green square in the middle. Um, and the one that we want is actually the last one in the list, which is Res um, seven point six two uh, four by one point five. Um, just before you get to the SMD um, components, there um, that's the smallest resistor in the list. And because we use <coughs> quarter watt uh, resistors for guitar pedals, they're usually pretty small. 
Um, there's only there's not many that are smaller than that. Only point uh, 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 one eighth watt um, resistors are, are slightly smaller, but um, that's the one we need anyway. Um, so so just place one of those on your layout. To do that, I'll just do that again. You just you just click on the one that you want, and it comes up with that outline, and then you just left click again. Um, onto your layer and then right click when you're done to get rid of that silhouette when you when you finish placing um, your components. So there we have R1 and R2 um, so they'll be our um, biasing resistors for the um, for the op amp and then we're going to need two capacitors uh, one's a film cap and one's an electro um, so we need to go to the library that's called cap which is actually I'm pretty sure at the start of the library list across the top there uh, there it is cap not cap SMD that's that's SMD, we don't want that, we want CAP on its own. And a little explanation as to how to find um, the CAPs in this list. Um, the, I'll just place one down because it'll actually be easier for you to see um, what, I'm, what I'm referring to. This one looks about the right size. Basically, the, the, the way these objects are named in this list, um, you've got CAP-5.08. Um, the 5.08 is actually the spacing between um, the pads. Uh, and uh, so the the leads of the capacitor and and most film caps uh, that we use in guitar pedals it's kind of a bit of a standard to use five millimeter lead spacing for for film caps and they're probably the more popular um, film caps around so you want to find a cap that's got f cap hyphen 5.08 the the numbers that come after that are the are the dimensions of the cap um, so if you're doing a micro if you're doing a one microfarad cap you're actually going to want a bigger one than the one that I've put down. That might be a little overkill, but you will need a bigger cap than this. This will this will be good for 100, 100 nanofarad, maybe 200 um, nanofarad. Once you get over about 200 nanofarad, you start getting, in, particularly in the microfarads, they start to get quite chunky um, and they get a bit wider, uh, and you'll need a different cap for that. Um, but um, there's a way that you can check if you've got the right component and I'll explain that once we've finished placing the um, the the components. So the next thing we're going to need is the electro. Um, so uh, the, the electros are actually also in this um, cap library so scroll they're pretty much right near the bottom I think from memory. There they are. Um, so pick one that's got cap, it says cap it says cap PR hyphen um, at the start of the electros um, and then there's another number and it's exactly the same you've got some have 2.5 some have 3.5 that is the lead spacing on electros generally they range between 2 to 3.5 most of the most of the common ones that you use um, are between 2 to 3.5 I just use 3.5 um, because I find that um, if I use 3.5 it pretty much covers it for everything uh, if I get a cap that's 2.5 or 2, uh, 1.5 mil is not that much to be concerned about. You just get a tight fitting electro, which um, you could almost you could all, all you could almost say is a good thing. Um, so pick one of these that's the right size. Um, I'm actually going to go for. I'm actually going to go for. Uh, this one will probably do. I'll go. We'll, we'll use that one. Um, the one that I'm using is um, cap uh, uh, 3.5, uh, 8H, and then 15. Um, 8H is probably means the height, and 15 might be the um, di diameter. I'm not. I'm not totally sure on that. But um, just look at what the um, lead spacing is, which is 3.5 mil, um, and you should be right. Um, and so that's all the that's all the components that we need. Now I said before that you can check. That the components are correct. There's a, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. If you're not sure which component to use or the one that you want for a particular um, particular purpose, you can get a pair of calipers and and measure the real life component and see. For instance, this cap you could um, use the calipers to measure between that those two pins, uh, those two leads, and you might find that it's 3.5 mil. Um, so so you'll know that you're looking for a cap with 3.5 mil. You measure all the dimensions and. Um, and get and and pick one in the list that's exactly the one that you need. Um, <clears throat> same goes with the film cap. Same goes with the resistors. Um, and another way that you can do it is you can actually print off um, just the component pads and get the real life component and and poke it through the the piece of paper that you've printed onto to make sure that it's going to fit as well. I've done that a few times in the past um, with other things like transistors and 
and chips and things like that. If you're not sure, uh, the best way to check it is to look in the in the data sheet, and you'll find in there to, it'll say um, what the package is, um, and and then you can just find the package name um, in the libraries. Uh, so that's how you locate um, the the components and. You might sort of be thinking, gee, this is tedious. Every time I've got to lay out, I, I've got to put a component down, I've got to do this. But that's not the case. Um, you can pretty much just open up the project that you previously made and then just control C out of one project and control V into the other project because you can open up multiple dip trace um, windows and just, just copy paste them into your, into your new project and you won't have to worry about it. Um, that's usually what I do. I just copy them out and put them in because I've already gone to the trouble of finding these um, components and actually doing this tutorial I had to kind of relearn how to find them in the list because I usually don't even look in these libraries unless it's a component that I've never used before. So the first thing we should do is give these components some values. Um, uh, so this is the 100 nanofarad film cap that you've got on that schematic. Um, if you go up to the right hand side here there's a, um, there's a, there's a value called value. Um, if you double click in the space next to it, there's a blank square. Double click there and just type in what the um, uh, what the value what the value of the capacitor is. In this case, it's 100 nanofarad. Um, this is particularly good for when you get complicated layouts. You can get very confused and lost once you've got tracks flying all over the place and names and notes and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's a good idea to have. Um, the value in there or if you look if you come back to it in a few months time it can just help um, uh, uh, help you work out um, uh, what component is what and and where everything sort of fits in um, so for C2 which is the uh, 10 microfarad electro electrolytic um, do the same thing put in um, put in 10 UF being microfarad and then R2 and R1 are the same. They're both one meg capacity, uh, one meg resistors. To so put in one, one M, capital M, and one M for that for the next one. And then for the chip, put in what the chip is, which is a TL071. So now you've got. If you click on them, you'll know exactly what you're dealing with. You've got um, all the values in there. Um, I don't like this chip being called a U1. Um, some people call it U1. You can change it to IC1 if you want. Up to you, personal preference. Um, uh, to do that, um, go into, um, you can go up to the top here and go, I think it's view and then um, pattern, no, 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 sorry, no, that's how to do something else, which we'll do in a moment. Uh, no, to change that, you actually right, <coughs> excuse me, you actually right click on the, on the component, it comes up with this list, at the top of the list you've got the um, uh, U1 in inverted commas, just just um, click on that, and a little box will come up, and then you can type in you can type in whatever you want. You can type in Ronald McDonald. It's up to you how you're going to name your components. I'll just type in IC1 so you can see what happens. Um, now that's changed to IC1, um, but we'll just leave that on U1 anyway for for the sake of simplicity. And I note that um, Beavis Audio actually uses um, the ref there's U1 as well, so we'll we'll follow what um, what what he's got there anyway. Um, so that's all the components um, labelled, and they're actually all in the correct order. So, for instance, if these two were around the wrong way, if that had if that had C1 and that had C2, you could change them just by right-clicking and going up and go change that one to C2 and change the other one to C1. So, um, yeah, that's how you that's how you change the um, the ref des, which is what that thing is C2 C1. That's called a ref des. So, um, what do we need to do next? Um, I don't like the ref there's been on the outside of the component like dip trace automatically um, automatically puts uh, I like it to be on the inside of the component um, so let's do that um, there's two ways to get to the move tool um, you can either go view pattern marking move tool or you can just press uh, F10 um, so I'm just gonna hit F10 and then you'll notice once you hit F10 you can all of a sudden you can start Clicking on these um, these these uh, component labels. So um, this one I'm just going to put on the inside there. This one on the inside in the middle. This is particularly important for when we do silk screening in the next tutorial um, because this is going to come out on the board. Um, so it's a bit cluttered if those ref deses are all floating around on the outside of the components. It's better to actually put them on the inside um, of the components. It's less confusing as to which which component it um, relates to as well. So just put all those, we'll get into the habit of doing it in this one even though it's not going to come up on our 
on our um, etch. Um, we'll just we'll just put them on the inside anyway, um, as a matter of habit. Um, so that that looks good. And then just press F10 again to get out of that mode. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to do is change the pad size. Uh, etching these for some people probably might not be much of a challenge if you're good at uh, etching um, and you can etch small small pads. I'd classify these as being small um, for my etching abilities, and I like to change them um, to be to be actually substantially bigger. Um, I find it's easier to etch, easier to solder onto, um, and the drill holes are, are, are a little should be a little bit bigger in my opinion as well. Um, so I like to change those pad sizes. Something that you're going to want to know how to do anyway. Um, so let's give that a shot. So there's two ways that you can do this. Um, I mentioned this in my last dip trace, um, my last dip trace tutorial. Sorry, I accidentally double clicked on that um, component. Um, when you select the, the whole component, it goes, uh, it, it will highlight light in a light blue color like this. When you select the pad, it'll turn red. So you can see how that goes. I've, I've got the whole component selected there, and then it's red when I hover over the actual pad. If I if I right click when the when I've when I've selected just the pad, I'll be editing only that pad. And if you've got a component that's got different uh, different shaped um, pads, I just find it easier just to do them separately. So for this one, um, we will change this um, circle one first. So so right click on it when it was red. So highlight it so it's red. Right click, pad properties down the bottom. And then I'm going to change this to 1.8 is what I usually do. Actually, the the whole size is fine. 0.9 mil is fine for that. So leave that at point um, at 0.9 mil. Just change the width and height to 1.8 each, and you'll see that the um, pad gets a bit bigger. And then do the same for the square one. Uh, again, don't don't right click on the component. Right click when that pad turns red, and then go pad properties. And then um, this one comes up with a, with a different sort of box. Won't go into much detail about that. Just click on Patterns Pad Properties again, and then change that to 1.8, and then 1.8, and then you'll note that the square will enlarge, which is good. That's what we want. And then pretty much do it for, for. Um, uh, in fact, for these other ones, we're going to do it a bit different. Um, for this one, I'm going to actually. I'm not going to select the actual pad because see, these pads are actually the same shape, so we don't have to. We don't have to um, specify them separately. Um, so. Select the whole component like it is now. It's light blue. Right click and go pad properties, and then change them to 1.8, 1.8. And this has one mil. I'm just going to leave that at one mil diameter hole. But in this case, select um, apply to all pads down the bottom there, and click OK. OK, and you'll see that both of those pads just um, enlarge at the same time. So we'll quickly do that for these two as well. So for this IC, if we did apply to all pads, it will actually hijack that square pad and make it round, um, which we don't want to do. We want to leave it as a square. You could go through and do them all separately one at a time, but that's a bit time consuming. Um, you can actually make all these round pads the same with one with one maneuver, so we'll do that now. Um, right click on one of the pads, uh, one of the round pads, so, so that it's red. Highlight it so it's red and then right click. Uh, and then go pad properties, and then remove this use pattern pads properties check mark, uh, checkbox here, and then Change the values 1.8, 1.8. You can see in the background that 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 um, pad is selected. In case you're wondering um, what it is that you're editing, you can see in the background um, that the one that I selected is still highlighted. Um, and then in apply to instead of all similar, uh, sorry, no, it it usually comes up as current pad as the default. Instead of current pad, do all similar, and it will change all the round um, pads um, uh, uh, simultaneously. And then we just want to change this one square one because it's a bit small. So just so just highlight it so it's red. Right click, pad properties, and then change um, change the dimensions to 1.8 and 1.8, and then go OK. And now that one's big as well. So that's it. That's all our that's all our components ready to ready to route now with the um with the tracing. Um, uh, in the next video we'll 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 lay we'll roughly lay them out um, and we'll we'll trace it all um, and. Um, uh, yeah, we'll be well on the way to um, having the um, having the finished effect. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe for the next one, which I'll upload shortly. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.